So guys, if you've been following our channel, you've probably seen that some of the topics I've covered are attacks that our industry is going through. Whether it's the EPA or different legislation, it seems to keep on happening to us. So as I was working on a different segment, which is really towards our channel with car modifications and so forth, I ended up realizing there are a ton of modifications that have helped our world in many different ways. Our world in general and has helped not only emissions, but all kinds of things. So in particular, I'm gonna go into Formula One and I'll, let's talk about it. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Talking Mod. So on today's segment, we are going to talk about technology that our industry, our racing industry, car modifications, particularly Formula One, has modified and helped change our world. Now, if you don't know Formula One, it is the top tier of racing. Um, it has the most funding, I believe. And in my personal opinion, it is number one. Now, um, I'm gonna go into right into it and I'll go into the first technology, one that actually I am remembering from um, back in the days of college. Now, back when I was taking physics, I remember studying engines. We had to study some engines and stuff like that and my professors were talking about it during that time that efficiency for motors um, for fuel efficiency was close to 30 to 35 percent. Now um, that was probably pretty accurate during the time when I was at school. So we all remember the V8s. There was the V12s, the V8s, the V10s, V8s and everybody was super annoyed about it losing the V8s in Formula One. Now if you don't know Formula One you might have seen it on Netflix there's a lot of drama but Formula One is really about the cars, the technology, the racing and all these different technologies really make differences and changes. Now, in 2013, they switched over to a V6 twin turbo. Um, it was a hybrid type of, not a hybrid, but it was a, it was a V6 turbo hybrid motor, I guess. And efficiency at, with the V8 was at its highest at 30%. So the thermal efficiency, I, I said 30%, but it's about 29% that um, the V8s, in 2013, the last race, it was at 29% was the highest efficiency that Formula One had on the V8s. So what does that mean? That means that basically we're getting a lot more efficiency, for sure. But that also means we're not using as much gas. We are also having a, we have a lighter engine so we can perform better. It, just in general, a lot less of any, all the, the harmful byproducts from a motor, right? So big, big changes and very rapid, right? Uh, efficiency increased and increased. So that's one thing that has now helped the world. And I, I've seen this technology start to filter into current day, modern day engines. One of the bigger ones now, the second one that's really, really big is a really interesting one and it really changed the world, okay? okay. This one is called the Kerr system. So if you've been watching Formula One and you see them overtake, they have now rules in place that they can only use Kerrs at a certain point where they, have to, they can activate it with a button. So KERS was developed in 2009 by the Red Bull chief engineering team. And that basically was to capture the energy from the braking system. So there's a, if you've ever watched it, they, they overtake and it's a dramatic amount of power. Today, this same technology is used in hybrids, in buses. It's basically making a lot, this, this recovery system from our braking system, right? The braking energy. Um, it is making everything greener. We are reutilizing the same energy we put out and we reutilize it. It's so crazy, in fact, that the Isle of Eig, I can't really pronunciate it, it looks like egg when you read it, E-I-G-G, -G, um, they are utilizing the same power, the same flywheel power energy system to power all their houses and their businesses. The same technology is being used to power that, to power it. So. Pretty incredible stuff to make things greener, right? So as we're getting attacked by the rest of these industries, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we are actually helping to contribute to this world and making it a greener and better place. Here at Mod Bargains, we're here to help you guys out with car modifications, whether it's wheels, suspension, whatever you guys are looking for, we are happy to help you guys in helping you modify your vehicle. So I don't know if you guys know this, but your cell phones, the 5G network that you guys are using, that's derived from F1 technology. Say what? If you look at McLaren's F1, their data, you know, didn't stay on the ground at all. 
they basically was were using that type of data information with air traffic controllers running thousands of simulations, just like they run simulations on the vehicles, running thousands of simulations every second on the fly to avoid air congestion. So saving time and emissions. So Formula One actually has affected doctors and patient lives in general. If you've ever looked at these cars, if you've ever been around a Formula One or even an IndyCar or IMSA car, it's about getting as much sensors and getting as much information because information helps us derive what we need to make on the changes, right? So if you've ever been to one of these races, you'll see these huge towers basically with servers and they're just gathering information left and right. That same technology is being used in hospitals to save lives. Just like a patient, its vital signs are monitored. So we've all seen the super quick, fast, you know, changing wheels and tires and so forth, right? There's a lot of data that goes on here and a lot of information and, you know, what's the best procedure? Well, Formula One technology back from Ferrari in the 90s and then later on in 2016 with the Williams team, they use that same communication between nurses, doctors, and so forth to help teach and create scenarios for life-saving measurements in Cardiff Hospital, for example, and how to handle triage and how to handle fast-moving theaters of operation, whatever is needed. So the pit efficiency that McLaren was using, Ferrari was using, these have been studied and now is being used in hospitals to save lives so that they can react faster. I mean, it's not just Formula One, yeah, they're racing, but the same handling of how things are being used, how people are moving about, what sensors, what information, how people communicate, this same information is now being used by doctors and in, in hospitals today. That's an amazing thing. So continuing on reducing emissions, this is a pretty interesting one. In Formula One, this is more of a recent one, they used aerofoils. So they developed aerofoils energy um, in partnership with Williams Advanced Engineering. And today, this has been added to refrigerators, right? To improve the performance of refrigerators and chiller cabinets in our supermarkets and convenience stores. What this does is basically it's an additional foil system, meaning less energy is being used. So all these new refrigeration systems, so forth, are using this technology. It's, it's a very rapid moving technology that a lot of people are using. Again, reducing emissions across the world. All these technologies help push Formula One cars faster every day because they're trying to get milliseconds down. And we are talking about fractions of a second, but that's what makes the difference in these races. Yes, there are these drivers and the drama that happens with these teams. And if you watch Netflix, you're probably a fan because I'm definitely, I've been a fan for a very long time. I'm sure if you guys have seen those movies, um, like the Ford versus Ferrari, or if you've seen the movie Ra uh, Rush, for example, and Nicky Latta goes back, he, he's surprised that Ferrari doesn't have titanium and they're not using carbon fiber. How much does she weigh? 600 kilos. That's crazy. Why so heavy? This is back in the 70s, right? Today, a lot of our cars have carbon, carbon fiber, but back then, nobody had that, right? Aluminum bodies, all these technologies continue to advance. Today's modern day technology is something that I think our whole industry needs to pay attention to. And I'm gonna give you guys a quick, easy example. This is probably from like 10 to 12 years ago, and I still haven't seen it today's modern car, and so I put the challenge out there to brands like StopTech, or Brembo, or whoever, when I see Formula One, you know, they've, if you, if you watch Formula One right now, you've probably seen some of the calipers. Now, these are standard calipers right now on a car, right? And you've seen this, you see this every day. It, the standard caliper is on the side, right? And Formula One, you know, the, it seems logical. It's completely like, okay, it makes sense. They were able to put the caliper right in the center here. When you put it right down in the center, center of gravity is better. You now have far more control of your vehicle. And that just helps, you know, that this is a millisecond. This is maybe a fraction, 0.1 of a second that's gonna be faster. Yes, it makes a difference. So my challenge to the, the car modification industry is pay attention, guys, because this technology is available and we should be able to see it. So I'm gonna go into one that's really recent and it's actually one, and I'm, it's kind of a little bit of a spoiler. So right now Red Bull is leading and how is, how is it that they're beating Mercedes? It's actually gonna be a very interesting technical uh, it's available out there, and it's just something very small. I'm going to go into the the t -t -t today, Junior. The technology, because I want you guys to see how far we can come along 
and how these car modifications from different parts of our industry should take this information and build it. So as you guys might remember, I had a video where I did a talking about spoilers and obviously in Formula One they use spoilers and it helps bring the downforce, but it also generates drag, right? And that's why I think sometimes, you know, you really need to know what the heck you're doing. But what's really interesting about what Red Bull has done in the last couple of weeks when they have released it, actually it's gonna be in the next race coming up. It's going to be on the on the next, their second car, it's gonna be on there, is what they've developed with their diffuser. Basically what's called, they're calling it the shark tooth. People are calling it the shark tooth diffuser. So I'm hoping that by this channel you hear it first because I can't wait to see the aftermarket scene have the shark tooth diffuser because this diffuser, what it's doing is kind of circumventing, it's creating enough downforce that you really don't need to have such a high elevated spoiler and to create too much of this, it can still give you the downforce but take away some of that drag. Increasing speed dramatically. Um, I can go into some of the technical details but I'm gonna show you guys a picture uh, over here. I can link you guys, all the, I'm gonna also link you guys to, there's some great information where you guys can see all the years past it's incredible to see some of the some of the technology. I'm talking, even if you go back 10 years or go back 15 years, you might just still just be on the cusp of seeing it now coming out to our vehicles. So, but particularly on this diffuser, I mean, we're talking about basically what they've done is these shark teeth is, it covers the entire scope of the diffuser. And what the best way to describe it, I'm gonna read it, is um, the diffuser basically effectively energizes the air accelerating vortices creating serrations which cover the entire diffuser. This keeps the whole flow on top of the diffuser, energizing the diffuser, so it's rising further away from the ground at low speeds and the downforce is reduced with speed. Basically, they are able to circumvent the spoiler. It's pretty awesome. I want shark tooth diffusers on my car now. So, I mean, again, if you start reading about these technologies and I want I, I'm just I want you guys to be aware of it because there's a lot of great technology that's available in Formula One. And this is just, as I'm preparing this segment, I was just looking at, hey, what's going on in today's, today's current Formula One? And should our car modification industry be doing this? They should be taking notes, figuring it out, and putting it on the aerodynamics because these guys are doing all the work. They're, they've got all the resources and the best engineers in the world putting stuff together. So there's no reason that we can't get it on our own vehicles. Anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think about this topic. I know I covered a lot of information here and you know I think it's a very fascinating topic. Hopefully you guys like Formula One. I do want your comments below. You guys know we respond as best as we can. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And I will see you guys on the next Talking Mods.